Welcome back once again, Real People, Real Life, Wichita, Kansas. I'm Here we like torches. I know. Yay, we Yay. have like torches with us. With a different shirt. I know. I'm the live sheep in the group. Well, well, that's okay. <laughs> I need to order more. I need to that's order why you're in the middle. We had to feng shui. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we had to get some feng of that. Feng shui this thing. Um, so we got a lot of things we're going to talk yeah. about in this particular show, but you are kind of what we call one of our um, uh, special... Host, okay. Go to. Go to. No, Sean is our special host. He's oh, okay. Okay, he's special. Okay. Interesting. I know, right? Get him a fit. It's just never a dollar, let me tell you. Okay, so Mike, um, I know you because you obviously are a fantastic author and you do a lot of things that I think is what you do for the community. That yeah, um, uh, and, and from the pack. And if you ever have like an issue or something that's just driving you crazy, this is a good guy to talk to. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I, love you okay. I love you just for you. I know, I love you just for you, honey. If, 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 if the keys weren't here, we'd, we'd sell. Yeah, right? <laughs> 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 okay, I love it. I love it. Tell me about okay. What, what are you yeah. guys doing with um, Mr. Well, with the homeless? I mean, that's well. There's a lot of things going on with the homeless uh, right now. The uh, the, the, I heard the chief police on the KNSS radio just uh, Sunday morning talk about a lot of the issues that are coming up with the homeless and the large providers and the large gatherings of people that are coming and how the city's having issues with that. So there's still issues. The uh, For people to know me, I can be conservative in one way. I can be pretty liberal in another way. That's why I love you. Uh, I, 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 I grew up poor. I mean, real poor. I grew up as a, a child who was abused in gangs and still have the marks and things of that nature. Uh, and I was actually homeless when I met my wife. And when I went to college, I was living at a YMCA homeless shelter. And uh, so to me, it's something that hits home. It's not just a proverbial ideal out there in space someplace. But my belief is, and I think society's showing it, there is way too much empowerment going on to stay homeless. Mm -hmm. And there, there has to be more agencies and efforts in place to motivate and encourage people to want more for themselves. Right. So, so you're saying like all the places that are feeding the homeless and stuff like that are encouraging it? I, I, I can say it this way, I, and, and a lot of people do, they go with good hearts and good reason and with good intent, uh, but I have a fellow that was with us, played two years with the Kansas City Chiefs, and is homeless in the city of Wichita, and he was living at, the, at our house, we have a community house where people can come and live, and not on a temporary basis, but on a long-term basis. And he decided he didn't want to live there because we charge $135 a month, and that includes everything except your toilet tissue and your toiletries, like toothpaste and toothbrush. Those things are donated to us. A but week? Includes, yeah, a month. A month? a month? And it actually cost us more than that, and my wife and I and other contributors helped supplement the cost of that. But his exact words, and, I, and you know, you may need to bleep this, I don't know. He says, uh, well, I don't want to stay here because, and this is a quote, I have everything I need given to me on the streets. I prefer to use my money for the drugs and the whores. So when they're at that place, and I've worked with individuals that have died on the street because everything they have that they need is given to them. Wow. There needs to be a place to where they can come along and be motivated. And it's not the providers. I think the providers have great hearts. Uh, but the way I put it, there's a lot of do-gooders, but not enough do-riders. Exactly. So people have to do what's right for the homeless and the poor. The, you know, It's not just the homeless that I work with. Uh, the segment we're doing on, on rape and abuse, that, that's that's really a passion and a love of mine as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so what can you... What, what can we do then? Nothing. I mean, no, no. This is why I always, when people I mean, ask me, you know, when people ask me, for example, you know, I want to help with, you know, donations to, to different homeless organizations or groups or whatever, my first thing is please contact Mike Furches on Facebook, okay, and ask him what he thinks and what it is you're wanting to go do, okay, because we do have organizations and people that, that are, are dear friends of mine, you know, that it's that Christmas thing, I'm going to feel good, right. you know, so I'm going to go out here and I'm going to donate or I'm going to take my kids and I'm going to go and, and drop off food and necessities and, and bathroom supplies and stuff like that, you know, and, and how does that person know that he's... Uh, or that he or she is giving these items to the to the better right. candidate, or right. better you know the person that is well, you know, or just enabling. Okay, I'm sorry. Exactly, providing the crutch. Enabling you know somebody to stay in that situation. I only saw this call you. Well, and, and my belief is that ultimately what has to happen. The one missing, and because I, I do presentations to the homeless groups all over the country, I'll be visiting the homeless group in Pensacola, Florida, in the next couple of days. 
And uh, what happens is that people, they have every intention to do what's right and to do what's good, but they really have to find out to do what's right. But the one missing ingredient is hope. Mm -hmm. it, it is something you would think that with the current political system that we have, that hope would be one of the things that's you know, out there and in the forefront. Well, it's not. Well, that word's kind of been burned. It's been, it's been yeah. overused and, and people have forgotten their own meaning. So you have, to discover, you have to discover and come about the process, where does real hope and true hope come from? For me, that comes through my faith. Okay. Now, other people don't have to be a requirement of that, but I can tell you this emphatically. The changes that I have seen take place in the most drastic level has taken place with individuals who have taken their faith seriously. And some people may call that a crutch if they want to, but you know what? If you need a crutch, you need a crutch. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't it's have not a problem. bad crutch. It's, to, not, it's not a bad crutch. To lean on. I mean, exactly. Right. Well, if after using the crutch, you come out of it stronger and right. bettering yourself, then was it really a crutch? No. You know what I'm saying? Or was it's it just a, a stepping change. stone? Yeah. It's exactly a lifestyle you know, change. You know, it's like, I don't know if you all seen the movie War Room at all. But, I mean, the, the couple that's having problems and she starts to pray and, you know, all these things come, to, come together. And it's, it's, it's that, you know. She has nowhere else to go. She falls back to her religion. And whether, whether we're Catholic, Methodist, Baptist, whatever, we still have the same God, most of us. So, you know. It we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you back to the same thing. Now, you also go and you uh, critique movies and documentaries, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a movie that you went to Oklahoma recently. Oh, we were talking about that. Oh, did yeah. you guys already? A 13 hour? Yeah. We were, it was off south camera. Yeah, it was off camera. camera. Um, I want to go critique movies too. I know, right? Well, you can. Yeah. Just go to the movies and critique it. There you go. It's like, like you To get published is a whole different story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he's published it. Maybe like the news is still an Eber. <laughs> that would be a blast to have somebody do that, especially if you have different viewpoints. I love those two. Yeah, uh, yeah 13 hours, I think it's a must see for any American. Mm -hmm. And there will be people that will just, they will hate me for saying that. They'll blast I the remember. movie without ever seeing the movie. And I've got to know Chris Tonto Peranto, who was one of the men on the ground at Benghazi. He wasn't a spectator, mm -hmm. he was on, if you see the movie, He's a prominent character in the movie. Uh, he's one of the he's one of the hired troops, or not necessarily a troop, but a uh, the, they're CIA well, contractor. Yeah, he's a it's con contractor. Contractor, and uh, I, I think it's a must must see. Despite what your political viewpoints are, uh, the responsibilities of when we put soldiers and Americans in harm's way, uh, the need to protect them. And what I will say about my perspective, I, I thought I knew about Benghazi. I did not know about Benghazi until, that. until I saw the movie. And I talked to Chris specifically about this. And the movie, a lot of people are real critical, but Chris is very specific. The movie is dead on to what happened. They were on set. Okay. It's based off of a book that they wrote. That was my next question is how much how, how much fact-checking has gone into this? Because sometimes you go see these movies oh, and, and you're, you're like, okay, that every scene, that they, right every, every, they, were, they were on site for every scene, and they had the right to veto any scene and correct anything. That is that right? Correct. So it's a lot like an American sniper. It's a document. It's even more of a docudrama in some ways than American Sniper. American Sniper is a good movie as well, but yeah. the, it's a Michael Bay film. You know, it, my, it did the battle scenes, I thought, with such realism. Yeah. And you began to understand that this was not a riot. No, it wasn't. No, this was a plane <laughs> attack. They had three different waves that it came in. The first was to gauge defenses. The second one to make sure they knew the defenses. The third one was slam dunk. Oh, well, it, it was to get coordinates to, yeah, to continue with artillery. And these and are, like, they fought. Those guys that attacked Michael were very the, experienced. The one that did Transformers, yeah, right? Yeah. And part of Transformers was, was done was here. 3D effects done here at Mind Fire. Yeah. yeah. Transformer yeah, 3. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's your full circle. Yeah, there you go. In our, full, our, full circle. Our, 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 our shame and our blood are Mind Fire. And our shame and our blood. Good job. Good job. You like that? So it's, it's you know, I love doing the movie reviews because I love them. I, I had a movie review that I turned. I watched about three fourths of it, and I told the publisher, I said, "You don't want me to do a review for this because it's so bad." And uh, so you know, most of the time it's fun, not all the time. I turned down a junket to leave uh, to do the show. I had a junket to go to Branson. Oh the junket, man! They actually pay you to go do that. Really? I'm yeah, sorry. I'm telling you, we can have something here. Is there, we, we, we got it. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, throw me into that one. I've got, I was going to say this. what. Well, I know, but back to that movie that you did go to Oklahoma, um, and that's basically, I would say, probably the most real true story on Benghazi. Um, and I could tell when you came back after after viewing that that it, it, it really... Uh, it, 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 had, it changed me. It, and movies, did, yeah. movies have the power to do that because I'm really apolitical. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I 
I'm not an Obama blaster. I'm not a Trump lover. You know, I'm, I'm apolitical. I'm not a Trump basher per se. Until I saw the, y'all, y'all haven't seen the picture today of everybody doing this. What? <laughs> what? That, that, what? That, that, what? No, that has to have been photoshopped. No, no, it's it's Orlando, Florida. Florida. Are you kidding me right no, now? No, so, you know, I try to be more than fair. I know. But that that movie, uh, it changed my life. It changed my perspective. And I, all I will say is. There is no way that I, there's one candidate that I will not vote for. I, I just I can't do it. That would so. be Clinton, in case y'all didn't know that one. Hillary. Hillary. Yeah. Her, I thought her husband was a good president, but I won't vote for her. But yeah, no, enough no. of that. I love politics. <laughs> I think Bernie. Oh, politics gets everybody in trouble. Yeah, if Bernie, if Bernie's running against. Uh, we, I just I don't understand how you can run for president and still be under FBI investigation. That just seems a little well, odd to me. And then they're at the point where they're offering <laughs> immunity. Uh, what? Server, yeah, did you see that? The IT guy. What? Yeah. The guy that did the server in her bathroom has complete immunity, which means they're going after people much higher than him. Stay tuned. Yeah. And that's not the Republican part. That's, that's the FBI. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Get the popcorn out. I just don't understand. You, like you said, if somebody's being investigated by the FBI. And that's both sides now. If, if Trump has pending cases with Trump University and right. that, you probably shouldn't be our president. But I know. We're going to come back and have way more fun with all this in just a minute. Real people, real life. Welcome back once again. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Welcome back once again, real people, real life. Real Wichita, life. Kansas. <laughs> oh, right here, right here. Have we ever explained these wonderful t shirts we've gotten here? Not yet. Oh, we wow. finally, you know, I was wondering. We have our shop set up where you can buy them online. We yeah. are, we'll be getting that. And we've got the coffee mugs and the pins. The hats aren't in yet, they're being embroidered. Um, the banners are in. Um, so I just, you know, keep buying more goodies and trying to get the whole. The whole meaning of the show, Real People, Real Life, out there is the fact that yeah, we're a TV okay. show with real life issues. Yeah, we are a TV Unscripted. show. Uh, I know. As you can tell. As you can tell. <laughs> you know, I always laugh. Somebody will be like, here's the questions I wanted you to ask. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> never yeah. mind. Uh, okay, here's my questions, uh, by the way. Um, no, so, um, okay, so Mike, you are such an interesting guy. Um, so, in addition to helping with the homeless and viewing uh, and critiquing movies and books, uh, God, you've interviewed so many people. Mm-hmm. You know, you've had a really interesting you know, to come, life. To come from, you know, I, I grew up in the streets. Right. And uh, I was a thug and uh, was homeless for a long period of my life, was abused as a child, mm-hmm. uh, raped by my mother, uh, and we later reconciled. And uh, and so I find, you know, the whole process, to me, it's just, it, it's really not my story. It's the story of what God did for me. Uh, but to, for me, to Billy Bob Thornton, mm-hmm. uh, Queen Latifah, I could just keep naming names, and uh, it, I just I can't believe that that God would be so kind to allow someone like me to meet some of the people I've met. Some of them I don't like. That okay, really who is it? Who is it? Was it Rob Zombie? Rob's great. Yeah, Rob was yeah. great. Rob was uh, he was a, he was as he was as much of a gentleman as anyone I've ever met and spoken to. Yes, sir. No, sir. Tom Five. Good guys. Good guys. Gals. Billy Bob Thornton, Bob, uh, Rob Zombie's up there. Uh, Chris Tonto Pronto, what an incredible guy. Uh, Kurt Lundstrom, the drummer for uh, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, was a great guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm mean, to, to pick others. And those, those, those are the four that really stick out. Okay, top four asshats. <sighs> I, only have one, I only have one, and I'm afraid to say it, but Kurt Warner. Really? Yeah. I was really well, disappointed. Saw? No, Kurt Warner, the quarterback. The quarterback. Kurt, Kurt Warner, the quarterback for the Rams. At one oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. I was, he was, you know, he may, and to his defense, he may have been having a bad day because usually what happens on those junkets, on those types of interviews, you're talking to someone they've maybe met for 20 people throughout the day, and you know it's at the end of the day or something. You, you don't know, but I was really disappointed. I, he came off really kind of obnoxious in the interview. Really? Wow. And, uh, and, and, and I, as a football player, I love the game of football, and he was a great quarterback. Fun to watch. Yeah. So. Unbelievable. Yeah. So. I stole your word, by the way. No, that's okay. Which word? Which word? Well, we're not going to repeat it again. I was going to say, it's the one that has hats. You just got, yeah. just got, uh-huh. you got bleeped anyway. So, I mean, uh, no, you don't act technically have, have to bleep that. I don't think you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I wanted to ask, you know, the police officers earlier, <laughs> you know, since we did have so many, you know, 
I said last week, I you know, whenever it was, weeks back, you know, that, um, you know, get ready. I mean, because we had so many people flying in. You know, of course, Trump was here, and 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 and, and Chris, and Bernie, you know, and Bernie, Rome, and Roman. Uh, what's the what's the dude's name? The, in Florida. Oh yeah, yeah Rubio. Rubio, Rubio yeah. was here. Little Marco. Yeah. Little Marco. Yeah, little Marco. Little Marco. Yeah. 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 He was here on Friday. Yeah, yeah. 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 On Friday. yeah, yeah. 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 Bernie was up in was up in Lawrence. Yeah. I'd like to go, but we had something else going. Yeah, yeah. Today. He went got a haircut up there too. I thought it was pretty cool. But, Mike, let me ask you a question real quick. Um, you you mentioned your past. You come from a, tr- a very troubling past, to say the least. What what got you out of that? Well, I was in a, I was in a gang in a place called Keystone, one of the toughest areas in the East Tennessee. It was so bad. I tell people it's the absolute truth. It's so bad they actually built the police station there shortly after I had moved out. And there's a bunch of guys. It was back in the days when the gangs were really more turf oriented. You, you have the large organizations like your disciples, your Latin Kings, your Sir Thirteens, all that now. But in those days, they were more territorial. So we had the, we had the Tyler Boys and the Keystone Kids and all that. So there, we had heard that uh, there was a movie plan across town uh, in one of the theaters called The Cross the Switchblade. And we respected the movie because this dude named David, David Wilkerson had got, gained credit, had gained respect from some of the gangs. So he was speaking in town. And so we literally walked across town to go hear him speak. And he, he spoke about the impression that most people have of Christians and Jesus and the whole bit versus the real person of Jesus. And there was really no comparison. And I had looked for love. I'd been abused. I'd been hurt. I'd been neglected. I'd gone through all these things. And I, my journey was a search for love. And I heard about this person of Jesus who loved me so much that he stretched out his arms and died on a cross for me. I started to walk up that night, and one of, my, one of the guys that we knew was walking up, and all the guys I was with was making fun. And it was, we were so bad that Wilkerson actually called us down. He said, you boys up there in section 213 to shut up. Security, if they don't shut up, get them out of here. We respected him for that. Wow. Actually, wow. really yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, and he called us out. And uh, so I wanted to walk down, but they started making fun. I said, no way, no way. We walked home. I'm glad there is a statute of limitations on this. We broke in, and I don't know if people know how hard this is. We broke into and busted open a uh, parking meter to get the change out. We went to Shoney's and bought strawberry pie. <laughs> That's a true story. And then we went home, and I just I couldn't I couldn't get away with the concept that I needed to you know give my life to Christ. And that's what I did. I, I'm not forceful with my belief. I don't force my belief on anyone. And I, and I always make a point whether I'm speaking in front of 10,000 in Tulsa or 50 in Fresno, California. I make a point to share that story. It, I'm not saying that has to be the answer for everybody. But if you ask me what the answer was for me, right. there's no doubt that for me, that was the answer, and I've never regretted that. Never one time have I ever regretted that decision. Well, because then, uh, you know, earlier you also said that you didn't, you don't understand how God has blessed you with the things you've been able to accomplish. And seeing the backstory, it, it all kind of connects for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, other you can see that it's not always easy to see for yourself. Well, but you, I mean, you know, not to go too crazy fanatic on this show today, but you know, once you once you give yourself to God, He's forgiven you. Yeah. So mm-hmm. there's a little more to it than that, but. He's also blessed you to do a lot of good work. You become a magnet. You know, like like Robin said, if you want to do some philanthropy stuff, go talk to Mike. I mean, you're now a, a positive magnet rather than a negative magnet. Yeah. I had a friend of mine. I play his music on my show. In fact, every on the Bacon Rock yeah. Network, every show that I start off with the song called Light Shine. Mm-hmm. And my buddy that sings that, Glenn Kaiser, Glenn's a real dear, dear friend of mine. And he told me one time, he said, Mike, I was struggling with this whole thing that you're talking about. And Glenn said, Mike, but you know what the Bible says, don't you? I said, well, I don't know what to say to him. He says, He who has sinned more has been forgiven more and therefore loves God more. And that's why I'll never... I'll, I, I, I have so many friends that are atheists and Muslim and other areas, and we're, we're legitimately dear friends. Uh, but I, I, I can never bring my place to, myself to the place that I can deny that love that I've experienced. That's me. That's awesome. I'm with you on that. Uh, wow. Um, Do you I, have a book we're going to talk about? Uh, Yes, you do. Yeah. Now I've got a book, The Keystone Kid. With the session, uh, we'll be talking about this a little bit later on. Uh, but for me, uh, I was going to therapy. I was a mental health professional. And Pat Conroy just died. And so uh, I, I talk, this is my second, first chapter in the book, right after the prologue. Uh, I talk about that. I had just seen the movie Pat Conroy, uh, uh, Prince of Ties. So it was during the Major League Baseball playoffs. Atlanta was playing Pittsburgh. I normally would have been watching the game, but it was rained out that night. I left Pat Conroy. I can't stand Barbara Streisand, but I really like Nick Noti as well. So I watched, I watched the movie, and there was an epiphany moment 
that the character that's played by Nolte, which was really patterned after Pat Conroy in real life, that he was going through all the confusion, the hurt, the pain, the rejection because of he had never recovered from the abuse that he had had as a child. And so I was telling my therapist this, and he said, Mike, he said, you need to write a book. And it was my wife and I almost divorced when I was going into and writing the book to relive all of that. Oh, wow. We'd been married 11 years, and it was after 11 years that I told her, this is why I'm the one. This is why that when I go to East Tennessee, I become a nut. I mean, I, I look, I've got scars on my, y'all can still verify the scars and stuff. Uh, I became a nut, and I, I, went, I would go crazy. And so the book is my, it's not really, the way I look at it, it's not my story as much as it is the story of what God did for me. And I've been so blessed that it's got the reviews it has and that it's touched the people's hand. It's called the Keystone Kid. Uh, if you want it, if you have a Kindle, you can get it for a dollar at Amazon. I have to pay them to lower the price on that. If you want the audio book, it's by one of the top readers in the world that did it for me. I have to pay an Is Amazon. It like it's, it's on uh, SoundCloud.com. Okay. The download for the audio book is free. Oh, wow. And the publisher controls the price of the paperback and hardback. I would not pay what they want for the hardback. Uh, I wouldn't pay that for it. Uh, that's why I had them reduce the price. And it's not any money that I make from anything I do speaking. I give it back to Mosaic and the ministry anyway. I don't keep it. Yeah. So. And I think a lot of people need to understand that. And that's why, you know, when when people do come to me and they and I do get people asking me all the time, you know, they they saw somebody, you know, living under the bridge, you know, which we have quite a few that live under the bridges. Um, you know, <coughs> or they may, may see them out begging. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, some of that is real, and some of it's not. Right. You know, um, so I always say, call you. Yeah. Be, be, be careful of some of the panhandlers. I saw a panhandler at 13th and uh, uh, 135 the other day at 630. And there's a problem if someone's panhandling for food at 6.30 in Wichita, Kansas. Yeah. Because there's this wonderful ministry called the Lord's Diner. Right. Mm -hmm. That has great right. eagles. Right. And the no questions asked in the Lord's Diner, we did, when I worked for one of the radio stations here in town, we did um, a Feed the Needy campaign. Yeah. And we gave out lunches, and they were in to-go boxes. And one of the problems that I had with it was there's two ladies that pulled up in a brand-new Chrysler Sebring convertible, mm -hmm. walk in, got their meals, and walked out. Yeah. And then I just got back. I was like, you know what? You can answer for that. You know, yeah. I'm not going to judge you for that. That's, just, that's one of the wonderful things about Florida's Diners. They don't question. Yeah. And it's open to anyone. So if someone's panhandling outside the doors or a couple blocks away, you know that there's other issues there that probably is not to their benefit to be giving them money. Mm -hmm. Correct. And I had this, and the reason I bring this up is because I had this situation with my daughter. Um, she, you know, drives to work basically the same way all the time and, and sure enough there was um, somebody that was constantly there you know and my daughter was like oh gosh mom you know I really felt like I should you know give him some money you know because you know and I'm like sweetie how do you know you know we'll come to find out uh, we asked some businesses in that general vicinity and actually he does quite well um, mm -hmm. the liquor store that he goes to on a regular basis uh, I will say this, he buys the most expensive stuff on the shelf. So, there you go. You know, <laughs> but, but, but let me tell you, um, that that's really not cool that you took the money from my daughter because she is a single parent and she does have a child, so that's not cool. Um, but yeah, so that does happen. So The intent to help is an honorable desire, right. but you got to ask yourself, are you really helping? Right. What are the consequences? Yeah. Right, right. You don't want to enable you know, an already horrible situation by making it... If anyone doubts that, they can come with me sometimes to a funeral of someone that's had too much to drink and been on the streets and, and died. Uh, I have to do that quite frequently because someone believed enough to give them money so they could stay drunk. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. You know, I... Remind me again why alcohol is legal and cannabis is not. I know, right? Yeah, well, well, don't get us started on that one again. Okay. Uh, I think we all know Heavy what topic I topic coming up next. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, it's a tough topic to say the least. But, and, we'll uh, but we're going to take it on. Thanks to Mike. We're going to go pay some bills. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Thanks, guys. And welcome back to another episode of Real People, Real Life. Actually, um, we have Jamie back here. We have a few different uh, hosts here today. We have Mike back with us. Uh, Don and Seth, of course. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but Robin's not with us right now. Um, this is a bit of a touchy subject mm -hmm. that we're going to address, and we're going to address a few different aspects of this, but starting with yours. Um, Jamie, why are you here today? I'm here to speak about a marital rape. 
some call it spousal rape, and when I, I had 10 years of it, I went through it. I had, um, was raped in every hole that you could think of. I had a loaded gun used on me. He raped me with a loaded gun. I had a baseball bat. I had a knife to my throat. He threatened to cut me. I mean, I would, it was very vicious. And all this time, he would tell me that, well, you can't tell anybody. I mean, well, they're not going to believe you. We're married. I have a license. I'm married to you. Wow. <laughs> Uh, did you find yourself without anyone to turn to I told that time? You know what? I didn't tell anybody until a, a situation came up where I had to take the stand for my kids, and I just broke. <laughs> I and then if you wait that long, then it seems incredible, it, not credible. There is five years you have from the last rape incident. You, that's how long you have to, to report it. And a lot of people don't realize that it's a, something that you can report. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't. Well, marital, okay, so being married to someone, um, old school ways was, you know. Yes, it was. You had to be intimate with that person. I mean, it was just, like, it was expected of you, right? Like, back in the Wild yeah. Wild West right. days and it's, such. It's hush, hush, yeah. You know, and so, I mean, I, I, I guess it's, okay, but nowadays. No still means no. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the bottom line. The more I thought, the married more married or not. So it didn't matter if I was sick. It didn't matter if I was had. I mean, we had kids in the bed. It didn't matter. It did not matter. I had to pretend so many times that, you know, it's okay. It's all right. Go to sleep, kids. Go to sleep. And I'm praying to God. It's like, please let these kids come running into the bedroom and stop this. <laughs> I had nobody else. And you just felt like you couldn't leave. Couldn't leave. I. I mean, when you have been so brainwashed and so and trained. Beat, yeah. To comes to where that's all you know, and the unknowing of where to go. Who do you turn to when you have somebody telling you, "You, you gotta go ahead." <laughs> like they're not gonna believe you. You're my wife. You know who do you tell? And and so and I did eventually tell, but it was too late. I did tell the cops, and they did tell me about the five year. I thought it was just like any you know you can report it any time. So when did you first report? What was going on? I reported it. It was five years and one month after the fact. Mm, so did the, did the rape or the spousal rape continue after that period of time? Or I was out of it. Okay. I was out of it. You had been out of it for five years and one month at that time? No, that was, well, yes, that's the last rape, yes, for five years and one month. And so that that one month, keep, did that prevent there from being any charges that followed through? Yes. On? No. Did it? Yeah. It did. And the thing is, also, he was, the the, the man that did this, uh, he was a correction officer, and he thought he knew the cops. And so, it so happens it was a small town, so, you know, you kind of, you, you, you have nobody. You know, if you know somebody, if you're in th that facility, you know, if you're in the cops and, you know, and all that stuff, you don't have any out. You really probably felt like you had absolutely no one. I had none. But there are, we tried to get someone from the uh, Wichita Sexual Assault Center out here again. They, unfortunately, were very busy at this time. But there are places that you can yes. turn to, and I highly encourage women to be brave and turn to someone if that's taking place, not not just because nothing happened to him, but because of your own needs right. at that point. Right, and, and men get raped also, which is most... That is true. And, you know, and a lot of men don't speak up. You know, from it. I mean, there's men that get raped. Women get raped. Um, objects. I had. Um, I've helped a lady that was being raped with a toilet bowl brush with the bristle end. She had no clue she was being raped. That's considered rape. She thought it had to be, you know, penetrated by the man and not by objects. And to, to, people aren't aware of that. You know, I went to the library the other day, and you have all these little folders and flyers for rape. A date rape, marital rape, drug rape, whatever, and there's never marital rape's not in that. It's not known. It's really not known. I had a very difficult time getting uh, guests to come and speak about it specifically, but I, I do know people that are in marriages that are still sexually active with the person they're married to, but are not that don't want to be. Right. Okay, and and you know that. Is that that's not rape though? Because they're still consensual. 
It's, it's, a, it's a very touchy edge. I mean, it, they want it, but then they don't. I mean, it's they're like obligated, right? Okay. Well, I think one thing a lot of people don't understand because my own story background includes being abused as a child, which mm-hmm. is rape. And what a lot of people don't understand is that your whole perception of sexuality and sexual activity, when you're in it for that period of time, it changes. Yes. So what's wrong? What, what's the right boundary? What's the wrong boundaries? You don't understand you, boundaries. You don't, you don't begin to understand that. There really needs to be, a, I think, more than a five-year statute of limitations okay. simply because the act itself has an impact for the whole life. Yeah. Well, well, and, well, yes. and see, I talked to a, a lady that was running from the mayor and, and back a while back, and she says it's perfectly fine to have that five year because, well, you know, it shouldn't take you that long to... To but that's up. wrong because you never like, know how long you're going to feel that trauma. I, you know? I, I tell you what, I went through counseling, and I went through a Christian program counseling because I was angry at God for you know how long this for one, okay? And so I was like, I'm going to go hit, I'm going to just go, I'm going to dig into this, I'm going to dig in it hard, and so I did. And this man, I went to a man, I purposely chose a man. It's like I'm trying to conquer so much, you know, because I don't want to be hidden behind all these burials or walls. There's I won't get help that way. So he made me sit down and read this book and, and film, put my my thoughts and my emotions and what I went through in black and white. And I'm going to tell you something. That's profound. That's huge. You see that, and it's like, how did I make that? How did I you know, survive? survive? And see, when I got with David, I mean, I t- I'm one of those that lays it all out on the table. And I took him to the park, and I said, okay, this is what's going on. I told him everything. And then he said, I thought you were going to dump me. <laughs> I'm yeah, having that talk. You know, I, I yeah, we're going to the park at 11 o'clock at night, and uh, yeah, we're, was, we're done. <laughs> right, that's that public place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he said, he said, I thought you were going to dump me. This I can handle. We can work through this. We can work through this. I mean, you know, yeah, but how is that? You know, it's, you. It's, well, and, and uh, it yeah. Has. So, I mean, you have to be I mean, very careful with your guys' relationship. Very. I mean, not to pry into your bedroom no. by any means, but... He knows er- He knows every detail. He's the only one that really knows in depth. I mean, it was the bloody gore. I mean, I kid you not, there was crap all over. I mean, when he, I was being raped. I mean, I was trying to crap. So that way, I mean, he would quit. That didn't stop it. Oh, you no, know? that's terrible, because that's my plan if that ever tries to... No, I tried biting it <laughs> off when he was raping me in my no. mouth. You can't. I don't know how these ladies did, because I didn't. Oh, wow. You know, and when he emptied that, when he said, you know, I had your life in my hands when he raped me with that loaded gun, and he just starts dumping up those bullets. And I'm like, oh, oh God saved me right there. Because I would have been dead. He would have, you know, I because I, he was had every intention. And there's nothing that can be done. Nothing. He suffers no consequence for his action. Nope, nope none. That must be very hard. Now, can I tell you a story? Sure. Okay. Uh, a woman, and I've been given permission to use her name, is incarcerated. Her name is Michelle Vir- Virges. Um, she's incarcerated because she was a drug addict. And um, along with many other women, she was violently raped with a bat mm-hmm. by the drug dealer. Okay. Um, she's incarcerated because her retaliation came after him not getting in any trouble. She reported it right away. She did all of the steps because it was a small community. Mm-hmm. He was well known. It was kind of brushed under the carpet. Uh, she went and burned his house down oh. uh, and killed a sleeping crackhead that she did not know and did not know was in the house, but killed her. And now she's serving the rest That's of her life. Her, ch- her three children are without her. We're looking to look into this and maybe help her, but it was all because of rape. Mm -hmm. She was so traumatized, and he was bragging about it around town, and it it traumatized her to a point of retaliation and taking it into her own hands. And it kind of reminds me of, like, the burning bed. Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. And and I know that he probably seemed really scary to you because he was in the military, or in the you know, he was an officer, basically. Oh, I mean, he would use his five-point restraints on me. He would do moves. He would want to, every time I, he'd show me different moves to get out of situations. And so I'm thinking, okay. Well, and every I, single person out there right now is thinking, well, he has to have fell asleep at some point. You right. know, and how to get out. Well, you know, I have three kids. Right. 
and with three kids, and I didn't have any family. I didn't have anybody, and I was like, where do I go? I had no clue where to go. Right. I had no idea anything was out there. What advice would you give somebody in that situation right now? Let's say there's somebody out there watching this. They're living it. What would you say? I would say don't be afraid and speak up and get out because it, it will not get better. It will get worse. You need to be have the courage to stand up and speak because if you don't, then you're going to be struggling. I mean, it's horrible. I don't, I don't know. I mean, you just got to get out. Mm-hmm. I, I would Do say, what it takes, yeah. whether, you, whether you have kids or not. Yeah, you have out. to get out. You yeah. have to. Well, we're going to come back and address this some more. We've got to take a small break. We'll be right back. All right, you guys, welcome back. Um, we're still here with Jamie and her husband. Uh, we were talking about relationships just a minute ago. Uh, moving on from that relationship, that must have been very difficult for you. I'm sure anyone involved with someone that's been in a situation like that, it's challenging. But to actually be able to, to trust again enough to, to date or become intimate. Well, for me, um, I a lot of people that have gone through rape or any kind of rape doesn't mean be a marital. They're, they go, some will go from being isolated. They don't want to have any sex whatsoever or get out there. And there's also, there's ones that become a, a feed about it. They have to, just, that's how they do it. And, un, I mean, unfortunately, you know, I was the both, you know. I mean, he was the only one after the fact. But I, I sure the heck didn't, you know, hold back. I was pretty much cheap. I mean, I went to the bar, knew where he was, wanted to get in his pants, got in his pants, you know. It was that was my goal. I had to have that connection with him, some man. But I worked with him, and I seen, I watched him, and I seen how I could be safe with him, you know. And and I have been. I mean, he's been there for me. It, it wasn't that difficult because I was able to. I was getting counseling, and I was getting the help to do that. Now, if I didn't have counseling, I probably would have self-destruct. I would have. I think I would have, yes. Yeah, a lot of people understand that sometimes the counseling, just the counseling process itself can be really difficult because you have to relive everything. It is. Yeah. Were, you, were you together when you were doing that? No. Yeah. No, I I did it with by myself. Um, I knew I needed to get help. I couldn't be very good for my kids if I was that way. Um, but what a lot of people don't understand is my mentality is not up to par as as a, you know, almost 38-year-old lady, you know. I mean, it's stuck sometimes in that teen setting or that young younger thought. It takes me a little bit to catch on to some things. And so and he's been very patient. It's like, he's like, it's right. You know, I mean, he, he understands that because... He, if he didn't, we wouldn't be married. I mean, it sometimes it's hard. It's a struggle. I'm thinking of other other viewers as well that have gone through similar situations. I think I know. But would you explain how important it is to have a partner with you that that is understanding that you can talk to? You have to be able to have trust somebody so in depth that, like for him, I mean, I it's very important that you can trust the person you're with. Tell them everything. I mean, you're going to be very vulnerable, and you're going to feel very naked and exposed. But the only way you're going to start getting healing is by doing that. And he was, well, I mean, there's not many out there that will do what he did, you know. I mean, but you have to trust, and you have to keep trying. You can't keep yourself sheltered because it's not going to work. So on a scale of 1 to 10 for the viewers that are watching, how important is that? It's very important. It's a 10. You have to have a support system. Or you will fall. I mentioned that because I know so yeah. many that are afraid to involve their spouse or their partners, and it, it's it's a prerequisite, it's a must that they be involved for healing to take place. Well, it's like you know, for him, you know, I mean, I told him about handcuffs. I was handcuffed, you know, um, or there's, I mean, I was raped with a candle also, and there's, and I, we went through an uh, antique store, and there was a, that candle that looked like that candle and I'm just shaking like crazy and he happens to grab me and hold me and he's like I know that's let's keep on walking let's just you know he just does that he shelters me a lot and helps me he'll, he'll keep that view and watch so he knows the triggers that'll yes yeah, yeah. that's good yeah that kind of leads me to a show we did on um service dogs I mean I, that's kind of a PTSD situation it is okay and have you ever thought about maybe looking into getting a service dog 
You know, I had thought about it, um, but Cause he can't be with you twenty four seven. No. But a dog can, right? And see, and part of that is, and I think that'd be great for some people. For me, not for me, because then I, I just feel like I don't. I'm not strong enough to care for an animal. You know. You know, I mean, I can care for my son, and I can care for my husband, but if you add any more to the package... It's just overwhelming. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I have grandkids, and, you know, and if I'm by myself with the grandkids, sometimes it gets a little bit overwhelming. And I'm thinking of viewers that are just flipping through the channels, and they stop because of the subject matter. Uh, one of the questions is, how important is it to you for you to talk about your experiences? Very important. You have to talk about it. The more you keep inside, the more of, your, of a prisoner you are. It doesn't help the person that raped you. It doesn't help you. I mean, you keep quiet. You're keeping their secret. You're helping them. Yeah. Plus, the more you talk about it, the more people out there become aware that they're not the Absolutely. only ones going through this, yeah. that there are people you can reach. I mean, there's support groups. You. Well, I've done counseling and done presentations across the country on the subject of abuse. Abuse is rape. Yes. And it, you, you talked about your search for God and where was God. That, that's a question that virtually everyone I've worked with asks. Mm -hmm. And it's pro I think it should be asked. And it, unfortunately, the subject matter. But look at what's going on in Garden City right now. I don't know if y'all following the news about the swimmer. Uh, Great Bend. 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 Yeah, Bend. We came from Great Bend. And, yeah. they're, and they're kind of sweeping it under yeah. the rug and wanting to hide and they want to talk about it. I'm, I, I'm very upset with that. Yeah, it, it has to be. Yeah. Uh, same way. It has yeah. to be discussed. It's a serious issue. And until people start addressing it, it, it impacts you not just for a moment, but for the duration of your life. Yes, it does. Uh, it, you, you will forever be a rape victim. And the question becomes is, will you be a strong victim that overcomes, that still has to deal with it, or will you become the subversive introvert that really struggles? And it also breeds yeah. right. it. Yeah. Like abusers, the people that are abused tend to abuse. Tend to become abusers. Mm -hmm. You know, and I really honestly believe that if you seek counseling and you seek therapy, you know, like peer, ther peer counseling, mm -hmm. individualized therapy, you know, you, maybe you can prevent. Right that effect, you know, individually, but I mean, there's so many people out there that are experiencing not just marital rape, not just abuse, but like allowing it to take place because of drug habits, stuff like this, you know, that's still rape, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, there's just so many people out there that don't know who to turn to. Who would you recommend? Well, I w first of all, I would recommend this person be licensed. I, I, a lot of people have issues with this. I know churches even have issues with me saying this. But just strict religious counseling will not suffice. You, you don't necessarily know. And if you can find some type of support group as well, the, the best thing for me in my life was to finally start telling the story. It still is difficult to tell the story, but it's, it's still healing. And then that communication that you have with your partner is incredibly. I can't tell you for my wife, she has been, she's been the reason I'm still alive because the emotions, the depression, yeah. the post-traumatic, the, the nightmares, they still exist. They cease. But licensed appropriate counseling, and it's and it's it is treatable. The the things that you said, writing down your experiences, becoming familiar, telling the story. The difficult thing is when you tell your story, and then people don't believe you. Yes, that That's, happens quite a bit. Yeah, but you you know the truth. Yeah, and you have to be at peace with knowing the truth and doing your own part. What happens when I mean, okay, you found yourself in court. When you told your story, did you get treated as if you were making it up? Um. Actually, when I was on the stand, like I said, it was for something different, and I couldn't. Even, I was crying so bad I couldn't even read what they wanted me to read. Um, both attorneys, the, my my the ex's attorney was actually crying. Um, he took his glasses off, but he was crying. And my ex was not even in the room, but uh, every everybody was in there. They were crying, and they were like, "Oh my goodness!" I mean, they what I'm telling you know, and they're like, "Why didn't you say something?" Why didn't you tell people beforehand? Well, who am I supposed to tell? But that's so easy to say. Everyone. I would step like out onto my porch yeah. and scream. And see, when you're living in it, you don't see that there's people out there. Yeah. When you're, when I'm out here now, I'm like, tell everybody. Go tell. Tell your Absolutely neighbor. Absolutely everyone. Yes. Anyone. You know, but when you're in it, you see, you're blinded. You're, you don't see anybody. You want to... You want, you're ashamed, you're humiliated by the fact of what's a lot. Now, on. marital rape, okay, let me ask you a question about this. Okay, rape is obviously rape, right? But do they look at it differently because you're married? They shouldn't. They because should. no, yeah. Should yeah. Be, yeah. no. No means no. No means no. 
mean, but I do they? As, as, as husbands and wives, we kind of think it around a little bit. And, you know, Mrs. Oh, no, Dur- Mrs. Miss style. Yeah. But That's I think, not right. I think if there's a serious problem there, you know, that, it, yeah, it has to be whether whether it's myself maybe doing that against her or whether it's her husband. It, it shouldn't matter, right. you know? The psychology of it would be, to me, is that the individual that's perpetuating the, the crime, because it is a crime, Yes. that there's something in them that's screwed up. And until they get some level of help and treatment for that, they're going to continue on to that same behavior. Whether it's with her or the next correct. person. And, and that brings such a good point, because when I did finally tell the police, and I had, I wrote a report, you know, I did it anyway, you just have documentation. Well, this police officer came into my home, and he was hitting on me at the same time. And then he's telling me, oh, I bet you enjoyed every bit of it. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, that brings me to another uh, topic real quick. There is an, an Ohio, um, a city council member or a state representative or something, you see me post that, mm-hmm. who is claiming that you cannot get pregnant from right. That oh, if, did you read that well, when I posted yeah. that? I'm, and he's saying, he's saying, if you do... It is because you enjoyed it because your body is set up in a defense mechanism. Oh, that was so upsetting to me. What kind of an idiot would say well, that? There's, there, yeah. you know, there, there's some research that's been done, uh, and, you know, depending on how graphic you want to go into I can go into the graphic, graphic nature of it, but I don't want to go there. Just give us the idea you know, of the version. Okay. <laughs> For pregnancy to occur, dual stimulation or orgasm is yes, but it, your it body will improves, respond. It greatly improves the chances. Now that said, uh, my son is a victim of uh, we, have, we have an adoptive son, and he is a victim of being raped by two brothers. The, the, his mother was raped by two brothers, so there's no doubt that it can occur. I agree. Uh, no I mean, because your body goes into like a, a self defense, self right, you know. to live, right. preserve, you know, mode, and so. I just I feel like that was so. It's the same argument that they that they say that you must have enjoyed it. Yeah. For, or you uh, would have for left. That to happen, yeah. or if, if or time. it may not have been even physically possible. It's like no, your body goes into a self self. You or know. or it's not really right because you stayed there. And and all of, all of those things are really they're a societal problem. Absolutely. Because we ignore the issue, we sweep it under the rug, we come up yeah. with various excuses, and it really boils down to no. Means no. no. Yeah. Well, see, and I would like to see, like I said, pamphlets out there, more acknowledgement of this because it gets swept a little bit. No one gets it. Does. I mean, it's not noticed. And that's why I do public speaking. You know, most churches are the ones that ask me to go. And I'd rather have mixed groups because both need to know. Yeah. You know? Right, because rape is rape, and it's just it comes across the board in so many different ways, but still no means yeah. no. Let's, yeah. uh, I appreciate you coming on the show and talking about this very sensitive topic. So. Brave, of the bo- brave of the both of Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I have to give you credit. And, oh, so. You know, you're such a strong man, so I've I've, we've gotten to know Jamie and yes. and you. And, You're very thankful. <laughs> yes. And so, well, thank you guys thank for coming you. on the show thank again. Thank you. I appreciate it. And that's it for Real People, Real Life this week. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, Julius.